I swear allegiance to Donald Trump. Forget the Constitution. I swear allegiance to Donald Trump. I swear allegiance to America. And I swear allegiance to God and Jesus Christ. That's our pledge. That's our oath. Long live the president. Long live the rightful king of America. We salute, Not a Roman salute, but a regular salute. We salute you, our leader, our hero. God bless you. Pray for our president, our real president. Did you tell him to go scorched earth? <laughs> I would have told him, I'd be like, President Trump, I want you to throw Hillary Clinton and Gitmo, Obama and Gitmo, just all of them. Just like t clean out the federal government and send them to Guantanamo Bay and like see ya. And I hope he goes full dictator, scorched earth, catapulting illegals over the wall. Like that would be awesome. But I don't know if he's going to do it. We don't want reasonable. We don't want reasonable. We want a revolution. We want a Trump revolution. We, we want Trump to be the dictator. We, we want Trump to come in here and metaphorically have a gun and and just take them all out. Just take them all out. That's kind of what we want. We want to like lock down the country and uh, start sending people to jail. We want like a Trumpian hit squad to go around, like politically. I'm gonna start off by saying this is not a political event. And I say that with all sincerity, because what we're doing here tonight is kingdom business. Uh, this is God's business. And let me talk just for a, a minute about what it means to serve in government. Um, in Romans chapter 13, it starts off by saying, let every soul be subject to the governing authorities. Well, that sounds like we should be subservient to governing authorities, except I want you to follow the lines of authority. We are a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. That's the Great Commission, right? But that's not what it started with. It started with all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore. So Jesus has delegated his authority to us, the believers, and we're supposed to operate with his authority on this earth. And then we take a piece of our God-given authority and we delegate it to somebody to serve in office who's here to serve us. And so when we read Romans 13 with that understanding, you recognize the lines of authority. And then it also says this about those who serve in office, for he is God's ministers to you for good. Those who serve in office are called God's ministers for good. And it says that he is not a minister. Um, he, he is a minister to execute uh, wrath on those who practice evil. And so we have a line of defense that we elect and put in office to execute wrath. They call him God's avenger. All you who are elected people, I want you to know, you are God's avenger to execute wrath against evil. So thank you for serving in God's kingdom tonight. Hello, my friends. I'm Nathan Leal. The website is watchmanscry.com. And today I have a very grave warning for the people of God, for the residents of the United States, and the citizens of the world. Now, folks... What you just saw in that video reveals to us what they're going to do. The things that they have planned for this country are nightmarish. And America only has nine months left. Nine months until the election. And after that, by the end of January of 2025, old America is going to be a relic. And the new America will be born. It will be an America of fascism. And it will be powered by an entity. A fallen principality of destruction. And he goes by several names, the Destroyer, Apollyon, the Reaper, Satan, the Angel of Light, the Liar, and the Destroyer of Nations. The Bible prophesied that this entity is going to rise up at the end of time as the second beast that will operate under the umbrella of Satan, also known as the Kingdom Now Dominionist Seven Mountain Damnable Heresy. Nick Fuentes worships Trump. He's an anti-Semite who claims to be an evangelical. We are now visibly witnessing Trump worship in the open. The end time prophecies of the book of Revelation are happening now. The seals are breaking before our eyes. The omen's child is alive and well, and his name is Donald J. Trump. The two beasts that we read about in Revelation chapter 13 are assembling. We have the first beast that is going to consist of seven heads and ten horns, and that first beast is going to have a, a spokesperson. The Bible says he was given the mouth of a lion, and his mouth speaks great things. The false church was prophesied to rise up in Revelation 13, the second beast. 
That video you just heard tells us what the plan is. And I have been researching this. I've been looking into the people that are behind this, the leadership and their operation. It matches what the Bible tells us. And it goes by several names. It goes by NAR, N-A-R, which stands for the New Apostolic Reformation or the Kingdom Now Gospel or the Seven Mountain Gospel. It goes by a variety of things, but their belief system revolves around the need for the church to take over seven areas of the world, seven categories of our culture. And those categories are family, religion, education, the media, entertainment, business, and government. Those are seven areas that they say that the church must place soldiers into, and those soldiers must take over all those areas for the glory of God. So when we take government, the, the cultural category, the mountain of the government, that means that in every level of government, from the local level to the county level to the state, and then to the federal level, this false religion wants to place representatives in all those areas. It is happening right now. They are placing seven mountain representatives in local government. They are placing them in election boards. They're getting them to volunteer in precincts, voting precincts. So they're going to be in control of everything. But it doesn't stop there because their goal is also to go all the way to the top. In the federal level, they want to place their chosen person in office. He is the one they chose. And they had meetings with him and they explained to him all of the areas that they want to take over, which appeals to him because then it's going to allow him to centralize these same areas that are supposed to be separated for the balance of power, for checks and balances. But their document, Mandate for Leadership, you see the screen here, folks? This is their plan book. It's over 900 pages. You can download it for free. I'm going to put a link in the description below and you can download it. But it's over 900 pages. It's a... A big read. It takes a while to read it. But in their document, they talk about how they're going to change everything. And they're going to get rid of the FBI. They're going to place the Department of Justice under the control of the executive branch, or in other words, Trump. And they're going to place the FBI under the control of Trump. Their document also says that they're going to get rid of any investigations that the FBI is doing. That's a waste of time or that is without merit which will then eliminate the investigations against him. And that's what Trump needs to do, because if he doesn't, this is his only way out. In order for Trump to escape prosecution, he needs to become the president, and he needs to stay in there for life. He needs to become the dictator of America, or the king of America, as we just saw Nick Fuentes slobbering about. This is the roadmap for Trump to survive, and it goes hand in hand with the Seven Mountain Mandate. Because Project 2025, surprise, surprise, includes all of those areas. The seven mountains are covered in Project 2025. And when they get into power, Trump has already stated that he needs to be immune from any prosecution, which means he will be allowed to assassinate people. He will be allowed to kill people, to torture people. He will be allowed to bring a genocide upon a group of people that he doesn't like. He will be able to go against his opposition, throw them in concentration camps. He will be Hitler on steroids. This is the future of America, and in nine months, this is where we're going to be. For the people out there who still don't get it, I don't know what to do to help you. I really don't, because we have it right here in front of us. And if people can see this with their own eyes and then not be alarmed when we compare it to the scriptures, what is wrong with them? They are suffering from the great delusion. That's what's wrong with them. And Thessalonians tells us what the end result will be. It tells us. They'll go to destruction. Look what it says, folks. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this reason, because they didn't have a love for the truth, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie. And what's the end result of that? It goes on, verse 12, that they may all be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. And I have seen soundbite after soundbite of Trump MAGA followers who are interviewed by a journalist and they say, doesn't it bother you that Donald Trump, that he molests women? Doesn't that bother you? No, that doesn't bother me. We don't need a pastor. Okay, so it doesn't bother you that rape takes place because he has been accused of rape and found guilty, but it doesn't bother you. Nope. Okay, what about the classified documents? Doesn't bother me. What about if he kills somebody? Doesn't bother me. And then here's where they get creative and try to spin it. Well, what about everyone else? What about Obama? What about Hillary? What, what, what about Biden? 
the whataboutism to dismiss the blatant disregard for God's rule, for God's law, especially when he's the representative for Christian evangelicals and preachers and spiritual leaders? Donald Trump just called me on the phone a couple of days ago, and I want to tell you, I'm telling the world that we're getting this nation ready for the return of Donald J. Trump, that we will stake this Somebody say yeah! Donald Trump! Donald Trump! I told the president, I told the president, he'll be back, yes. I told the president, you don't have to worry about a thing because you got the church backing you up, y'all. The believers are backing you up, God help me. The body of Christ is backing you up and it's not coming from the mainstream church. Donald Trump is ready to come back, but he needs to make sure that he got warriors ready to stand with him. We don't care about those indictments. We don't care about those arrests. We can take those to the gates of hell. Are you ready to take this nation back? Are you ready for the, the greatest president in our lifetime to come back? If you're ready, shout yeah! God bless you, Florida. I'm Pastor Burns. God bless you. And I got one thing to say. We're just about to launch in 2024 a brand new Christian military academy called Burns Christian Military Academy. But they disregard his abominations, his deeds of darkness, his words of destruction, his desire for retribution and vengeance and bloodshed, his threats against the lives of Americans, his constant insults and slander and strife. You know, folks, Trump's a walking representative of the seven deadly sins, the things that God hates, the things that God says are an abomination to him. By the way, that's Proverbs chapter 6. Trump is an ambassador for sin. He is sin incarnate. He is sin in the flesh. He is sin before our eyes. He is not able to tell the truth. Do you notice that? He constantly lies, and it's like he can't even tell the truth anymore. Now, folks, who else has that resume? Who else has that issue? Who else has that problem? Well, of course, Satan does. He's the liar and the father of lies, and no truth dwells in him. But he appears as an angel of light. We know this, and Trump operates the same way. Nevertheless, evangelicals by the thousands, hundreds of thousands and millions, flock to him and say, give me more. And then they open their mouth, and they eat up his bird seed from hell. And then they turn their head sideways and allow him to tickle their earlobes. It's a romance between the people of earth and demons from hell. It's a romance between pseudo-Christians and fake evangelicals and demonic entities from the abyss. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion. Why? Because they had no love for the truth. So instead, God sent a delusion so that they should believe a lie. What happens if they believe the lie of Trump, of the Antichrist, of the little horn? What happens? Verse 12 says that they all may be condemned. That means condemned to hell. Folks, I'm fired up right now. But I need to be because this thing is serious. It's all making sense now. We can see how this thing is going to play out. The second beast is rising. And as this church rises, they have told themselves, they believe, absolutely believe, that they will then have the right to do what Romans 13 says, which is to kill, to assassinate, to murder, to lynch, to shed blood of those who they deem to be evil. And the Bible told us it was going to happen, and it's matching. We can see it. The false church has been infected by this delusion, and they have raised up their own Savior. Just like the Bible said, it says the second beast will get the world to worship the first beast. And by doing so, the seven mountain destroyers, demons, are going to empower their agents, or in other words, their misled people, to be infected with their poison. And then, folks, please pay attention here. The demons of the second beast, they're going to infect their followers who will then be given the sword to butcher any opposition and butcher any evil that they deem necessary to destroy. They're going to use Romans 13 to form lynch mobs and posses and assassinations and genocide against any people that they do not like, which includes the gender confused and also the woke ones, the gays, the LGBT, the Muslims, and anyone else that they don't like, including 
the real saints. And this is why when we read about the woman, Mystery Babylon, it says that she is drunk with the blood of the saints. Now that woman, Mystery Babylon, is, is revealed in Revelation 17 and 18. And it tells us who the woman is. She's the kingdom now, Seven Mountain Church. So now we know who the players are. And here is the other difficult challenge that is occurring with Christians today. Because since they were taught the wrong way, since they believed it was going to be the Pope or someone else, they are not trying to figure it out. They're not trying to use the discernment of God to isolate what Trump is doing and see if it matches the Bible. They're not doing it because they're under delusion. But for the folks out there who understand, who have the wisdom of God, and those of you who have your eyes open, the very tiny group of you who have your eyes open because you can see it for yourself, we have to understand that this requires wisdom and the, the ability to discern the Bible and separate ourselves from the old narrative. We have to do it, folks. And the old narrative consists of several things. There would be a pre-tribulation rapture, and then the war of Ezekiel would take place. That's written in Ezekiel 38 and 39, which consists of Russia invading Israel with the help of Turkey and Germany and Iran. Folks, you know the narrative. You know how it goes, what how Lindsay said. So that was supposed to happen. And then after that, the Antichrist was going to rise up and offer a peace treaty to bring peace to the earth. And for three and a half years, we would have peace. And Israel would start doing the animal sacrifice. But then after three and a half years, the Antichrist would go into the rebuilt temple and claim to be God, which would be the abomination of desolation. And then after that, he would come up with the mark of the beast and make everyone take his mark. And all of this was supposedly supposed to be going on while the second beast, the false prophet, or in other words, the Pope, were supposed to follow around this guy, the Antichrist guy. And we've all seen some of those visuals. The Pope guy following him is helping him in his quest to keep everybody hypnotized. So the Pope will follow him with an incense burner, keeping it real for uh, Catholicism. And the Catholics would merge with Islam and form a one world religion. Nope, nope, nope. Scratch that, folks, because we're here now and we're watching this thing play out. And it is not matching what I just said. But what I just said is what people are expecting. And that is why they don't believe it's Trump. Because they were expecting something else. One of the main ones was the pre-trib rapture was supposed to happen first. And since we're still here, then it can't be Trump. But last week we talked about it. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 tells us that the gathering or rapture will not happen until the revealing of the man of sin, the son of perdition. That happens first. And then it tells us what the son of perdition is going to do. He's going to take over the hearts of those who are compromised and those who did not have a firm foundation in the word, and those who were not watered with the water of God, those who were not nourished with his word, and those who did not have the word of God hidden in their heart. So those are the ones who have been misled. And folks, if you're new to this channel, please do not type below that, nah, -uh, the preacher of rapture happens first. God has not appointed us to wrath. I have covered that on several programs on this channel. So if you want to know the truth of the rapture, you can look on this channel, the rapture, it explains it. But just real quick, the rapture is not hard to figure it out. It's not a an unknown thing that we can't know and you have to be a Bible scholar. It's in the Bible, folks. It's very easy to find. And it's found in Revelation chapter 14, verse 14, where it says the son of man was in a cloud and he had a sickle in his hand and he thrust it into the earth and he harvested the earth. That event in chapter 14 comes after the seventh trumpet that is in a few chapters earlier. So that coincides with after the seventh trumpet. And then after that event of Jesus harvesting the earth, then we have the wrath. The grapes of wrath show up. It's mentioned at the end of chapter 14. The wrath comes out. The vials, the bulls. So then when we read the following chapters, 15 and 16 of Revelation, then we see the bull judgments. Those are the wrath of God. Those happen after the harvest. So the rapture happens in Revelation 14. So that means everything before that. All the trumpet judgments before that occur while the bride is here. That means we're going to have to face it, including the fifth trumpet, ladies and gentlemen. If we leave after the seventh trumpet, that means we're here for the fifth trumpet in Revelation chapter 9. We are here for that. And that fifth trumpet should terrify every Christian and have us running to the altar of God and the, the foot of the cross and praying and asking him to protect us from the fifth trumpet. Because the fifth trumpet is the release of millions of demons from the earth that have been in prison under the earth in the bottomless pit. That judgment occurs while the bride is here, while we are here, the remnant of God, the elect of God. So we're going to see it happen. And the Bible tells us who their leader is. 
It's the destroyer, Abaddon or Apollyon, also known as Apollo. The destroyer Apollo is going to release demonic locusts into the world. They're going to flutter about and they're going to go throughout the world to all four corners of the earth and they're going to sting the people who did not have the seal of God. The seal of God, ladies and gentlemen, that's what we get when we come to Jesus, when we repent, when we ask him to forgive us, and when our name gets written in the book of life, when we have a life of a relationship with him. That is what we need to be protected, the seal of God from those locusts. Now, I said a moment ago that while the Bible says this, and we are facing some weird stuff because people are acting crazy. There are MAGA folks who, they seem deluded, they can't think straight, they can't add up spiritual math, they cannot see what's in front of them. So their delusion, their spiritual poison infection has already infected their soul because they don't have the seal of God. Nathan, what do you mean they don't? Trump people have the seal of God. If a Trump person worships Trump, and considers him some kind of savior or king, and the admirer wants to paint him on their body and have his name all over them, that is worship of a human. And you can get mad at me all you want. This is a fact. This is the Bible. Invisible creatures are attacking and infecting the world. Invisible demons are infecting people who are compromised. There are demonic spirits, locusts, who can sting the compromised ones. And of course, you're not going to hear this from the other watchmen. You're not going to hear this from True News. You're not going to hear it from them. You're not going to hear it from Steve Banoon, Israeli News Live. What you're going to hear from them is that we need to be afraid of the reptilians and the spacemen and the spaceships and the Nephilim that are going to be walking around eating people. That's what they have a number of people occupied with. Or that the collider is going to open a portal. You know what, folks? We don't need scientists to open the portal to hell. Because the Bible doesn't say this in Revelation 9. In Revelation 9, 1, the fifth angel sounded the trumpet. I saw a star fall from heaven to earth. And he was given the key to the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit. Okay, nowhere does it say that that is the collider, the super collider. So while folks are afraid of the collider opening portals, there's much more grave things to be concerned about. The invisible demons are the ones that we have to war against. That's who the battle is against. And during this time, the ones who are wise are going to get a hold of this and stop wasting their time with the nonsense that is out there, the garbage that is out there, with the toilet water that they present as another program. It's content creation from hell to distract. That's all it is. Now, as I was saying, we were told the old model. We were instructed in it. We grew up with it. Preacher of Rapture, Antichrist, Peace Treaty. He claims to be God in the middle of the seven years, all that. Now let's set that aside to what's really happening. Above us, in the throne room of heaven, the timekeeper of the universe, our Lord, Yahweh, he noted the hourglass of mankind and that we were running out of times. We were approaching 6,000 years, so then it was time for the operation to commence, for him to test his church and his bride to prepare us for his return. So he allowed the enemy, Satan, to rally his troops. He's only allowed to do what the Lord tells him. So the dragon was given a misfit to raise up and to empower. And that misfit was Donald Trump. And Satan was allowed to take that man and groom him from the beginning of his life and present him to the world as a king, as a savior and a deliverer. And in real time, in the physical world, we're seeing this happen. So Satan recruited his misfit, Donald Trump, the little horn, not even a big horn. He's a little horn, even though he's full of himself and he thinks he has a big horn. So a savior showed up, the Bible calls him the little horn, and the Bible also tells us he'll come from the west. We covered this in the previous program. That's found in the book of Daniel. He comes from the remnants of Alexander the Great, the beast of Greece. Alexander showed up, his horn broke, four generals took over, and then the little horn was handed the baton to continue from there. And in a future program, we're going to break that down and we're going to cover all of it. But the Bible tells us he comes from the, the residue of Greece, which means the west. And the little horn will have strength that is given to him by Satan, but he'll also have a promoter. He will get a promoter that the Bible calls the second beast. And that second beast, it says he looks like a lamb, has the two horns of a lamb. In other words, he'll look like an innocent Christian. Now, the second beast is not a human, ladies and gentlemen. That's what we have to get out of our minds. We have the first beast, which is an end-time kingdom that has a mouthpiece to speak for it, which would be Trump, the little horn, but the main umbrella over him is the entire world system, the governmental system that's going to consist of 10 
different kings. That's coming, by the way. We're going to see 10 other kings aligned with Trump. 10 of them. But Trump will be the, the ringleader of them. So Trump is the little horn. He's the mouthpiece, the mouth of a lion. But the beast is the governmental system that occupies the whole world. So it's two different things. And we have to make sure that we're considering which one the Bible's talking about. Because the mistake people make is they'll take the word beast and apply it to the Antichrist for everything. And we can't do that. Daniel tells us that the beast is a kingdom. He tells us that in, in Daniel 7 and 8. So back to what I was saying. God allowed Satan to do this operation. So Satan recruited his spokesperson, Donald Trump, and he groomed him from the very beginning. And then the second beast rose up, which also is not one person, which is why I, I say over and over, it's not the Pope. It's not one guy. The second beast is a spirit that came out of the ground and infected the false church. And it cloned itself into a counterfeit church. When the second beast rose up, the spirit counterfeited itself and it cloned itself to look like a Christian movement. But it's powered by Satan and it's powered from hell. And it's also going to be able to do miracles of strange fire, which is what we see the Nar Church doing. They have fire constantly. They're always talking about fire. And they will have prayer sessions where they touch each other and, and give each other impartations. And they'll scream fire, fire, fire. While the people start having demonic epileptic episodes from the kundalini demons that the preacher puts into them. So this movement has polluted the whole world. And this movement is now alive and well throughout the world. It has infected the whole world. And we're going to also go into very deep detail about this in an upcoming program. I'm going to show you the beginning writings who started it, C. Peter Wagner. We're going to look into the writings of C. Peter Wagner and the Mike Bickle, the person from IHOP, and the others who are responsible for this crazy madness. Rick Joyner, Todd Bentley. These individuals are clerics, they're sorcerers, and they are bringing strange fire to the earth, just like the Bible said they would. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is all in the Bible. The core of their gospel is the Seven Mountain Mandate. It's the Seven Mountain Mandate, and if you've never heard of it, you can Google it. You can type in Seven Mountain Mandate into YouTube. Do a search for it if you're not familiar with it, and you'll see what I'm talking about. But the person who really promoted this, his name is Lance Wilnow. Here he is right here talking about it. You see this video? He's talking about the categories. And this mandate is very, very strong and deceptive because it has them all believing that before Jesus can return, they have to take over all of these areas and bring dominion to the earth, which the Bible does not say. But here's what's interesting. The Bible predicted that they were going to be doing this. The Bible told us that these people would be around and what their function would be. Because the Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 17, verse 9, Here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits. What does that mean? This chapter is about Mystery Babylon. It's a very odd creature because it, it has religion and politics built into it. It's a strange creature. The Bible calls it Mystery Babylon. We can read about it in chapter 17. So let me just read a portion of it. Verse 1. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and talked to me, saying, Come, I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters, with whom the kings of the earth committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast. So in other words, this woman is riding on the governmental system and steering it and controlling it. So this woman's very powerful. And I saw the woman sitting on the beast, which was full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. We have heard about the seven heads and ten horns forever. We've heard about that. Many of you can cite that by heart. The beast is going to have seven heads and ten horns. We all know about it, but I don't think a lot of folks have thought about what those heads are. Because it tells us right here, we just read it. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet, and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, having in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the filthiness of her fornication. And on her forehead a name written, Mystery Babylon, the Great, the Mother of Harlots, of the abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman, drunk with the blood of the saints, and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus, and when I saw her, I marveled with great amazement. But the angel said, Why do you marvel? I'll tell you the mystery of the woman and the beast that carries her, which has the seven heads and ten horns. There it is again, mentioned. The beast that you saw was and is, is not and will ascend out of the bottomless pit and go to perdition. And those who dwell on the earth will marvel whose names are not written in the book of life 
from the foundation of the world when they see the beast that was and is not and yet is. And by the way, when it says that, ladies and gentlemen, all the beasts that have come and gone through time, this is confirmed in Daniel 7 and 8. It mentions the kingdom of Babylon described as a beast. And then it mentions Persia that's described as a beast. And then it mentions Greece that would come after Persia, also mentioned as a beast. And when each of those beasts rose up, they came out of the ground and they took over an area of land and they recruited a leader and they fed him with information. They fed him with knowledge and wisdom on how to be a conqueror and they went out and conquered. But this was a spiritual entity that was behind this. So when we read in Daniel that the little horn comes from the residue of Greece and then right here it says the beast that was, verse 8, and is not and yet is. What this is saying is when the Bible was written in the first century, Greece was no longer in charge of the world. It was then Rome. Rome was the empire of the world at the time. So when the angel saying the beast that you saw was, in other words, it used to be here, in other words, Greece, but it is not now and yet is because it's going to come back. So this right here, by the way, folks, right here is proving that the empire of Rome, the Roman empire would not be the end time beast because it says the end time beast was, is not right now, which would have been Rome. So it gets canceled out. And then it will come back. Greece will come back. This is another proof that it's not the Catholic Church. It's not Rome that's going to rise up and do this. But moving on, it says, Here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits. Seven mountains. There it is, folks. The movement from the second beast has the belief of the seven mountains. The seven mountain mandate at the end of time, before Jesus can come back, the church of Jesus must take over those seven areas. And right here, we're reading that this woman, Mystery Babylon, in other words, the United States of America, has embedded in it a mandate of the seven mountains. And that's what we have coming up in nine months. The election that is coming, that's going to elect Trump in office, is controlled and powered and being promoted by the seven mountain movement. You see, folks, how it all comes together? So the second beast operates with the gasoline of the seven mountains. It's right here, folks. Revelation 17, 9. Well, Nathan, it's not the United States, though, because the United States is not in the Bible. That seems to be the opposition. They say the United States isn't in the Bible. But I'm about to show you something else, folks. Check this out, because we're about to see the United States. Verse 10. And there are also seven kings. This is the angel talking. Five have fallen. One is, and the other has not yet come. And when he comes, he must continue a short time. Now, let me stop. When we look into the Bible in the Old Testament we see that there are five empires in the Old Testament. The first empire was the Assyrian Empire, and then we had the Egyptian Empire, and then we had Babylon, Persia, and then we had Greece. Those are the five empires of the Old Testament before Rome showed up. So during this time when John is writing this, Rome is in power. In other words, Rome is king number six. So he says there are seven kings, five have fallen, which would be Assyria, Egypt, Babylon, Persia, and Greece. Five have fallen. One is, which is Rome. So Rome is the one presently while he was writing this. That's one is. And then look at this. And the other has not yet come. So that's saying after Rome shows up, there will be another empire from the time that this is being written, which was approximately AD 70 to AD 90, around there. But nevertheless, Rome was the empire there, number six. So from the time of Rome when this was written, all the way forward to the end of time, there would be another empire that would be the most strongest empire that the world has ever seen. And it's saying that. Five have fallen, one is, and the other has not yet come. But when he does come, he must continue a short time. The United States started in 1776. We've only been here a short time. So this is describing the short time empire, which is America, ladies and gentlemen. It's right here. And then look what it says. Verse 11. And the beast that was and is not, in other words, that Grecian beast that's going to rise up again, the beast that used to be here and is, is not now, is himself also the eighth beast. So that means Greece is coming back, or the spirit behind Greece. Now, the spirit that powered Greece is going to come back. So the beast that was, which was Greece, when the little horn's going to have the residue from, and is not right now because it's Rome, is also the eighth one. What do we have so far? We have... Rome is number six, the United States would be number seven, and then the eighth would be the resurrection of the sludge, 
the remnants, the residue of Alexander the Great's kingdom, of the power that he had, the might that he had, in other words. That doesn't mean that we're going to start wearing togas and tunics and start believing in mythology and all that. That's not what this is saying. What this is saying is the spirit that was behind Alexander is going to also power the little horn. And then look how it says it. The beast that was and is not is himself also the eighth and is of the seventh beast and is going to perdition. So what this is saying is the seventh is going to give birth to the eighth. So whoever the seventh kingdom is, the seventh kingdom, the United States, which means the United States is going to give birth to the eighth. In other words, the United States is going to morph into a new creature that will be powered by a spirit that's very strong. And when we look at the background of Alexander and his mother, Olympias, and, and Philip, his father, and their belief system, they believed in deities and mythology. And one of the reasons Alexander was so successful is because his mom told him that he was the son of Zeus. And then when he went to the Oracle of Delphi, which is also in Macedonia, before he really got going in his conquest when he was young, he went to the Oracle and he wanted her blessing and she told him he was invincible. And he received that prophecy at the Temple of Apollo. So Alexander the Great admired Apollo. Apollo was his hero. He believed that he had the blessing of Apollo along with the blessing of Zeus. Now folks, make note of what I'm saying right here. Alexander the Great admired Apollo and it fueled his, his conquests. And of course, he was powered by that invisible principality so he had help well who's the name of the principality well we know his name revelation chapter 9 tells us it's apollyon the destroyer or in other words apollo now how interesting is it that donald trump has apollo painted all over his house all over his apartment his penthouse in trump tower is a shrine to apollo he has them all throughout on the ceiling he has paintings of Apollo. He has one painting over his mantle about the new dawn. It's called the new dawn where Apollo is the sun god and everywhere Apollo goes he shines bright because he's the sun god and Trump seems to like Apollo. Trump seems to admire Apollo having a head of gold. He's orange because the sun shines on him and you know it's interesting that Donald Trump likes to paint his face orange just like Apollo and he likes to have big hair just like Apollo. Is this a coincidence folks? No it's not. That entity that was in Alexander, where we see in Daniel, the little horn comes from the remnants, and that entity is now in Donald Trump. That's why he can't lose. The entity of Apollyon has infected Donald Trump. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when we look at it this way, it makes so much sense. So, as I just read, the eighth kingdom, the eighth king, which is going to be the end time one where the little horn serves, comes from the seventh. So, that tells us that the United States of America is going to morph it's going to transition into the eighth. It's going to change. And that is going to happen when Trump comes to power and he gets rid of the Constitution and he becomes the king of America. And then he's going to start burning down everything. And he's going to be endorsed by the church, the fake fraud NAR church, who is going to bring bloodletting because they believe. Now, here's the other thing that's messed up. I have been hearing this for decades already. I have heard from Seven Mountain Mandate gospel followers who have told me and by the way some of you guys have heard of this as well i'm going to say some buzzwords that you're going to say whoa is that where that came from so the seven mountain mandate tells their people that when this time period comes god is going to energize he's going to recruit and he's going to anoint his followers to be part of a last day's army called joel's army and these members of joel's army are going to be able to go forth and they're going to be anointed by God, and they're going to be allowed to destroy evil and kill people who are evil. They will be able to go out and be assassins for God. And another one of the words for their movement is the man-child ministry. That's what it is, folks. For those who have heard the man-child is about to be released, the man-child this, man-child that, in the old circles where I used to visit, the old Watchmen radio shows, I heard that term all the time. I also heard another term, the Phineas priesthood, which is another word for we get to go out and, and assassinate and whack and purge people to our liking. If we don't like them, if we don't like that they are confused with the rainbow, then we can get rid of them. And when this thing gets going, a lot of those seven mountain followers are going to then be recruited by Satan and demons are going to go inside of them and they're going to go forth and perform an inquisition in these last days that is going to kill a lot of Christians and kill the elect. That's why we read in Revelation that Mystery Babylon, also known as 
Satan filled America. Mystery Babylon is drunk with the blood of the saints and the prophets. Because it's going to be... Now folks, please get a hold of what I'm saying here. Do you hear what I'm saying? The assassins during the tribulation are not going to be the Catholics and all of the bad guys that Obama's supposedly going to send to put us in camps. It is going to be the false church who is going to conduct this massacre. And Donald Trump's going to endorse it because they will be his soldiers to get rid of all the problems. And they've been talking about raising up a red army to gather up the oppressors, the opposition, to gather up illegal aliens. And that's going to be the excuse they use at first. But then it's going to morph into whoever we don't like. Because as we're watching all of these things take place and it's matching the Bible perfectly, even though it's not what we thought, it's still matching the Bible. If we have come this far with this mess and it's fulfilling the Bible, then the rest is going to happen as well. And this is why this is a dire warning. This is why this message is very, very important. And this is why everyone who is listening needs to take this seriously. And you need to share it with your loved ones. You need to share it with your pastor. You need to be screaming from the housetops. This message needs to awaken those of you who are taking it lightly. Those of you who are taking a nap right now. Those of you who are in a coma right now and sleepwalking. This message needs to awaken everybody. Because folks, this is where we are. Now how fitting is it going to be when Donald Trump comes back? Because it appears now, by the way, newsflash, the Supreme Court has decided to hear Donald's appeal to agree with him that presidents are immune from anything they do while they're the president. One of the circuit court already said that, no, a president is not immune. And Trump protested by saying it wasn't an insurrection and nothing, nothing I did was wrong. And so he sent it to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court has been sitting on it for a, for a while. And now they announced yesterday that they're going to hear it, but they're going to wait another two months. And then they're going to hear the, the case. But then their decision will come a month after that. So we don't expect to see a decision from the Supreme Court now until August at the earliest. However, in the middle of the summer, we have the RNC, the Republican National Convention, where they choose the nominee for president. So Trump is going to get the nomination before the Supreme Court gives their opinion. So he'll get the nomination and then he'll be running for president. And then the Supreme Court's going to come out with their opinion and say, you know what, we came up with our decision and... No, Mr. Trump, while a president is in office, he is not immune. However, he cannot be charged until he gets out of office and he becomes a private citizen. So while he's the president, he can basically just hold off his conviction. That was done purposely by the conservative Supreme Court that he placed in there. This was done on purpose to send the message, Donald Trump, here's the deal. We can't say that you're immune. However, we have a very clever loophole. As long as you stay in power, you can't be convicted, which will send Trump the message that he has to stay in power for the rest of his life, thereby being the king of America. So the Supreme Court is bringing him to power, which is what the Bible says is going to happen. That's in the book of Daniel. And in a future program, we're going to go line by line, and we're going to look at all the passages that prophesy all these things that I'm sharing. And by the way, when that happens, because the Supreme Court has bumped themselves into the schedule of all the trials Trump had to go to, that's going to then put all the other trials on hold. The classified document trial and the election interference trial in Georgia, that's going to put all of those on hold, which will then allow Trump to march right into the election and never be tried. And thereby, it seemed like he was going to go away. It seemed like he was going to get convicted. It seemed like he couldn't run. It seemed like there were roadblocks and how is he going to get out of this? And now, because of what the Supreme Court just did, Trump's going to march right in there and get elected. Now, if perchance he doesn't win, if there's not enough votes for him, they already have that planned out as well. The Republican caucus, the Chaos Caucus, and Mike Johnson and the MAGA bootlickers in the Republican Party in the House have already said what their plan is. They're talking about it with each other, and they already have it rigged. If Biden wins, they're going to contest it, and they're not going to allow certain certifications to occur from states that throw Biden over the top. They're going to reject them, which will then prevent both Donald Trump and Biden from getting the proper amount of electors that they need to win. Because if Mike Johnson throws out some of the results from some states, from some of the swing states, then there won't be enough electors for any of them. And if that happens, there is a footnote in the law that says if that happens, where there's not enough electors, then that throws the election to the House of Representatives. 
And if the House of Representatives has a majority, then they will vote one by one who they want the president to be. Thereby, he's going to come to power because of those MAGA guys that are in there. And that's why they were in there the whole time, folks. That's why they have been using delay tactics. That's why they have been playing around with their job, looking like goofballs. Because their purpose for two years was to just hold the fort, hold the line, and stay in their seat. On the other side of this, we will see that one of the heads was wounded. Remember, we have in Revelation, one of the heads. The Revelation 13, it had a mortal head wound, but then it came back to life. If we go to Revelation 17, we are told what those heads are. Those are the seven mountains. And the seven mountain heads are categories. Right here. Here it is on the screen. And one of the categories is government. The presidential head, the government, seemed like they weren't going to get their guy in there. And it seemed like he was gone. But now this head wound has been healed. And he's going to come back. So the seven mountain head wound will be healed. This was prophesied. We were given all of this information way back then, almost 2,000 years ago. So if all these things play out the way that it appears that it's headed, that means that the MAGA clerics and the MAGA sorcerers are going to succeed with their plan. With Project 2025, they're going to impose their new government on us, and it's going to create a nightmare. It's going to be a new world that includes the adder's bite, a very angry Satan who knows that his time is short, who is going to wage war with the remnant and the elect, the saints. And then it's going to be a war against us, folks. Because then something else is going to take place. Now, I have stated over and over in this ministry for over 15 years. I have been saying it till I'm blue in the face. I have been saying that the second coming of Jesus is not going to happen like we thought. And I've also been saying that when it does happen, the prophecies of the end times are going to mirror what happened in the first advent. The first advent gives us a snapshot of what to expect, in other words. If we have wisdom and understanding, we can look at the first advent and the participants in the first advent, which would be the 12 disciples and the betrayers, Judas and Barabbas, Pilate, the screaming crowd, the Via Dolorosa. All of that is going to repeat itself in the end times. And we as Christians are going to get to choose our role. Here are the roles. There is going to be the role of those who want to put their faith in patriotism who want to put their faith in destroying the oppression that they were living under. And the one who chose that role was Judas. Because Judas believed that Jesus was going to overthrow the Roman government and stop the oppression and set them free. He was looking at an earthly remedy, a temporary remedy. But Jesus never said that. He kept saying that my kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom is not here. He talked about the temple being within. It's in our hearts. So the presentation of Jesus was not what Judas wanted to hear. So Judas betrayed him because he would rather have the patriotic. And by so doing, he also betrayed all his fellow disciples, all the others. Judas betrayed all of them. So one of the roles in these last days is going to be the patriotic, well-meaning, who wants to see the world fixed, who wants to see the government fixed and the United States fixed and bring a remedy and do it under the guise of, a ministry, the seven mountain mandate, a mandate from God to try to use God in it to invoke him and claim that it's God's will and his blessing when it's not. So that's the first choice. And the people who choose that are also going to have to do something else because if they go down this road, which is the road of Judas, they're going to have to be a Judas. They're going to have to betray everybody else. They're going to have to betray the church. They're going to have to betray their fellow believers. And that's exactly what we're going to see happen. Because when Trump comes into power, those seven mountain mandate Joel's army representatives are then going to go out and they're going to, going to round up us, people like me, because I won't shut up and I have to warn the world. So they're going to round me up when God lets them and then they're going to do away with me. I will be martyred. But it's not just me, folks. It is those, the small group of remnant Believers, the bride of Christ, the real ones, the true ones, the called ones, the faithful and the chosen ones. It is going to be them who are going to be dislodged from the earth. And you see, folks, if the Judases betray the remnant because the remnant says, no, that is wrong. You can't be worshiping him. He's wrong. He's a fraud. Then we will be choosing our role as well. Because the other choice is to take up our cross and follow Jesus on the Via Della Rosa, on the way to Golgotha, to Calvary. For Jesus, for the testimony of God, because we resist it. So those are the two groups, ladies and gentlemen. And that is the choice that you're going to have to make. 
That is the choice that everyone listening is going to have to make. You're going to have to choose. Do you want to be the betrayer that wants to build a kingdom here on earth that the Bible does not support? Or is it following Jesus in the, the Via Dolorosa? And this is why I have said that the tribulation is not a test for the world. It's not a test for those knuckleheads out there, the evil ones. They're going to be taken care of during the bowl judgments. The evil of the world will be dealt with after the gathering of Revelation 14, when we have Revelation 15 and 16, the bowls, that's when God would punish the world for its evil. Isaiah tells us that. Isaiah 13, I will punish the world for its evil. But before that, we will be in tribulation and we will be tested. And the reason for that is so that we can show where our loyalty is. The loyalty, ladies and gentlemen. Donald Trump insists on loyalty. He insists that everybody who is a part of his team is loyal to him. And in order to be loyal to Donald Trump, then there must be something else that is sacrificed, which is loyalty to God, to the Bible, because there is no way to mix the two. Trump is a walking abomination. There's no way to say, I'm loyal to both. No, there isn't. You can't. You can't serve God and serve Satan. You can't have an idol and then have Jesus. You can't do both, folks. And the loyalty test that God is going to put us through will then show who loves their life here on earth and who is looking for a life in heaven. That's why it says that in Revelation. They did not love their life unto death, but they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. But they didn't love their lives unto death. In other words, they didn't want any part of this kingdom that Trump and his followers and the NAR knuckleheads are building. So, in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, the choice will be following the footsteps of Jesus on the Via Dolorosa, carrying the cross, or being in the crowd, hurling insults at them. Nathan, this won't happen. You're making stuff up. Uh, no, no. It's happening now, folks. It's happening right now. They are situated. The NAR Project 2025 clerics are working on this already. They have been working on this for years, and they already have thousands and thousands of loyalists who are ready to take the positions in the new presidency of Trump that's coming. They have been strategically placed throughout the government, to sway and force a victory by cheating. That's what they're going to do. They're going to cheat and steal the election. So when it does happen, whether Trump wins or not, he's going to win. He's going to end up being the president. And it doesn't matter what the election results are. They have a plan. Nathan, you just care about Joe Biden. You just like the Democrats. Who would you rather have, Biden? I suppose you like him. You're a communist. Um, you know what, folks? I'm not going to play that game. We're talking about the Antichrist here. Not a tired old man. There's no comparison, by the way. That's just stupid. That's just ignorant. It's blind. It's foolish. After hearing all of this, if anyone wants to still argue with what I'm warning about, I don't know what to tell you. You're lost. You're lost. Now, for those of you who are very concerned, and you can see what I'm sharing right here, I've laid it all out, folks. It's here. We can see it. It's evident. And for those who have discernment can see it. And many of you can see it. And you're trying to warn your family, you're trying to warn your loved ones, and they laugh at you, they mock you, they make fun of you, or they insult you, and then they question your loyalty to the United States, they question your Christianity, they question your faith in God. Folks, don't listen to them. Your weapon to overcome is the Word of God and the blood of the Lamb, which is repentance. You repent, and that happens by dealing with your sins to Jesus and having Him wash you, and then maintaining an upright walk. You know how to do it, folks. You've been at this long enough. You know how to do it. Those of you who are struggling, you know what you need to do. You know what you need to do. So it's the blood of the Lamb and the Word of our testimony, which is the Word of God. So these verses, the passages that I'm sharing on this program, are how you can overcome because you see it with your own eyes and go, what? This all makes sense now. And of course it does because it's the Bible. So what do we have to expect? If, if, let me just say if, and I'm going to throw in a small disclaimer because I wish it wouldn't happen, folks. I wish this was not going to be. I wish Trump would go away, and I wish I was wrong. And if it turns out that he does go away, then I will admit it. I'll be happy. I'll own it. I don't have a problem with that. But aside from me not wanting it to happen, their plan is in motion. And they have hundreds of millions of dollars invested in this thing. They have people placed by the tens of thousands in strategic positions all over the country. And they mean to get this thing done because it is powered by very strong, very strong principalities, demons from the ground, entities that are very, very strong. 
So what do we have to expect? This is what we have to look at in the days after his inauguration. Now, this is from Trump himself. This is what they're going to do. Within days of his inauguration, so that takes us to January the 20th, 2025, nine months, he's going to declare martial law, and then he's going to take us out of NATO. He's going to tell Putin, Putin, you can have it. Putin's going to invade Europe. War's going to break out in Europe. It's also going to break out in Asia because the war horse is going to go nuts and China's going to probably invade Taiwan as well as some of their other neighbors. We're going to see wars break out in Africa where people will be fighting over their boundaries. We're going to see it break out in South America. And then here stateside, he's going to tighten an iron grip around the neck of this country and his cult members are going to be given license to carry out their operation to be a member of Joel's army under the anointing and mantle of Satan. As they carry this out, blood is going to flow in the streets of America as well as in the world. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this thing's happening in real time. And this message has been on my mind for the last several days when Allison and I finally realized how grave this was, the gravity of it. I was literally sick to my stomach and so was she. I lost my appetite for a few days because I, I, know the, I know what's going to come out of this. I see it. I know the price that I know it's going to be required of me as well as her and as well as everyone listening. If you are part of the elect, the remnant of God, there's a price that's going to be paid. This is where we are, folks. So I don't have a fairy tale to tell you. It's all going to be great. It's all going to be good. 2024 is going to be full of blessing and we're going to declare this and proclaim that and like the NAR people do. You know, all that stupid declaration stuff that they do. No, we're in the last days. But folks, this is only going to be temporary. When Trump comes into power, the Bible tells us it'll be for three and a half years. And I'm not sure when the cock will start for that. I'm not sure. But I also envision, I can see, according to the prophecies, the mark is going to come from him and the NAR church. Whatever the mark of the beast is, the buying and selling, it's going to come from them. Now, I do have to say something else that Allison and I have been visiting, and we're going to touch this on our future program. The prophecy about the little horn, the son of perdition, going into a temple and claiming to be God, that rendition that was given to us about a rebuilt temple, I'm not so sure it's going to happen that way. I can prove it with the Bible. In fact, I'll tell you what it is. It's the temple of our hearts. He is overtaking the temple of the hearts of God's people. That's what Trump is doing. And in an, a future program, I'm going to prove that to you with the scriptures. I'll prove it, ladies and gentlemen. So the test of the heart is not for Israel. It's for us individually, one by one. It's about the temple of our heart, ladies and gentlemen. It's about what we allow to be in our temple. It's about whether we allow the money changer Trump to be in there. Because folks, there's so much to this. I have the information I have the passages, I have the scriptures to prove all this. So that prophecy is going to take place different than what we were told. Now, of course, there could be a literal sacrifice, but the Antichrist is not going to stop it and then claim to be God. That's not what it is. That is not what it is. Also, the mark of the beast may be different than what we were thinking. It may be different, folks. It might be a physical mark, yes, but it's also going to be an interior mark that's in the heart that labels our heart, that marks us, marks us before God. In other words, we will be marked with the witness of our loyalty. We will either be sealed by God or marked by Satan to worship the little horn. I mean, folks, when we look at the images, the imagery that's right in front of us, the Bible says there would be a little horn. Folks, look at his name. His name means little horn. It's a trump. It's a horn. Even his name fits. It's all fitting, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm going to go ahead and end this program. I'm sure that there are some of you that are, maybe you're freaking out right now. You're saying, what? This is not, uh, and some of you are probably in shock. Some of you are probably crying. Some of you have probably teared up and, and you can't believe it. You don't want to believe it. And that's the other thing, folks. The devil does not want you to believe this information. So he's going to get you to be dismissive of it. Don't let that happen, folks. Do not do that. This is the truth. The true heart of the scriptures. We are dividing the word and we can see it right here in front of us. And if I'm correct about all of this, if I'm correct, we don't have a lot of time left. You do not have a lot of time left to get your life right to the point where 
you can, with peace, walk down the Via Dolorosa, following Jesus, carrying the cross to your death. How many folks out there are ready for that? I'm sure there's a, a number of you that are not. Maybe a handful are, but most likely the majority is not. You're not ready to walk on the Via Dolorosa. You're not ready. you got to do some house searching and clean up, which is the other challenge now that I want to leave all of you with. It's time to get right, folks. It's time to repent. It's time to get rid of the, the things, the garbage, the remnants, the residue, the shrines, the trophies, all of those things that separate you from the blessing of God and the peace of God and they cause you to be out of fellowship with God. Folks, it's time because the clock's ticking. The clock is ticking. I know that this program was interesting and there's a lot to it. I want to suggest that you listen to it several times. Listen to it with your family members. Put it on your Bluetooth speaker and get a hold of what I'm saying right here. Share it with everybody. Share it with the world. Share it with pastors. Share it with spiritual leaders and share it with Trump supporters. And also remember us in this ministry. Folks, the offerings are down. I keep asking for the help and it's not coming. It's very small and I really need your help. Help me get this done. And this is no minor request that I'm asking. Ladies and gentlemen, I am asking you to help me fight the Antichrist. I mean, when you think about what I'm saying here, you're listening to a watchman, a voice of a servant of God to expose the Antichrist and to warn people not to worship the Antichrist. And if there was any other project in the world that would be viewed as important, what is more important than this, ladies and gentlemen? This is about saving souls and putting, pulling them out of the jaws of hell. So help me do it. There's the address right there on the screen. I'm also going to put it in the description. I also have PayPal in the description and Cash App and Venmo. So whichever one you prefer, folks, help us get this done. We're in this together. We are a part of God's end time remnant. But we're a small group. Have you noticed? There's not many of us out there. There's not a lot of people out there doing this. I'm happy to be here with you. And I'm happy that you're a part of the Watchman's Cry family. Help us get this done, folks. There it is. Watchman's Cry, P.O. Box 157, Priest River, Idaho, 83856. All right, folks. So until the next program, stay vigilant, stay safe, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.